This is the Rad Runner 3 Plus. There's a lot to say about it, but right off the bat, we got hydraulic disc brakes, we've got the semi-integrated battery, and some really cool rack and saddle upgrades. So starting off, I just wanna go through kind of the bike stock as you see it, and towards the end, I'm gonna show you all these cool accessories and stuff, including a trailer and a pet carrier. So this thing weighs 75 and a half pounds, which is quite a bit, and I think that has to do with you know the larger, wider tires, this spring suspension fork, which has preload and progressive lockout adjust. You can see that the frame itself is really overbuilt. We've got a gusset right there, some extra cross bracing, and that long rear rack, which I would consider this kind of a utility bike or maybe a compact cargo bike compared to long tail. So it's not quite as long. This is about 72 inches long, which is a standard bike length, but you've still got plenty of room back here. There's a yep seat window. You could mount a child seat. They've got like a passenger package and they've moved the foot peg position farther down so I love that so again it is a little bit heavy but I feel like the weights pretty well distributed between this eight and a half pound motor and 7.7 .7 pound battery pack across the frame it does only come in one frame size but we've got a lot of adjustability here this is a 27.2 millimeter seat post it can go up and down which is very unique there's some other you know, kind of little scrambler bikes out there that only have a single long saddle or seat and you sort of have to slide yourself forward and back to change your your leg extension on this one you can actually raise that primary saddle up and down it's much more comfortable standard 170 millimeter crank arms down here really nice platform pedals that are very sturdy those are aluminum alloy and then if you look at the handlebar right here this actually it's kind of a high rise bar it tilts forward and back so this platform can accommodate people of many different heights and body types but it's still very approachable very low standover height here so you can just step through the frame like this and stabilize the bike which is very handy if you are loading this up with racks and bags so these are 20 inch wheels we have thick 12 gauge spokes front and rear they're black they match the hubs and then a double walled rim these tires are really special rad power bikes by kenda so it's sort of a co-branding k rad up there they have puncture resistance as well as that reflective sidewall stripe that just helps the bike stand out the bike does only come in one color they call it charcoal and it's sort of this metallic dark gray so a little bit brighter than black but once you get the lights and these reflective tires things work out pretty well the tire size is very unique 20 by 3.3 so 2.6 2.8 and 3.0 that's considered plus size for mountain bikes 3.3 is a standard that rad kind of invented and it's not quite fat tire size which is 4 inch or 4.9 but it's bigger than plus size and it works really well kind of going off-road, going over little curbs or gravel like we see here. It gives you additional float. It also provides some stability side to side and it lowers the attack angle on the wheels because when you have small wheels, they tend to run into bumps and cracks. Uh, versus a taller wheel that sort of smooths over them. So I really like these. We've got this checkerboard pattern that's pretty efficient, but still gives you some traction if you decide to go off-road. 135 millimeter hub spacing up front with a nine millimeter axle and quick release skewer. And in the back, it's 167, so it's a little bit wider. I'm all, not quite the fat bike standard, but it provides more space for the disc brake and the free wheel on the other side. This is a 12 millimeter threaded slotted axle so it just slots right into the dropouts and look they've got a little torque arm there so it provides extra strength for this high powered motor we've got the disc brake caliper right here kickstand mount adjustable length i'm using a rock to straighten it out a little bit more for the photos and then the power cable running right here so that's actually on the left hand side of the bike and it's tucked in behind the frame between the disc brake rotor and the frame itself versus some of the other cheaper bikes and even some of the past rad power bikes they had the power cable coming on the right hand side which started to get really crowded with this shifter cable and the derailleur and, and it just it just stuck out more it was more vulnerable there so i just love how it's tucked between the frame right there and you might notice here at the bottom bracket of the bike this is like the controller box they used to have that bolted onto the bottom and there was like a protective shield i think it hung down a little bit farther and it just didn't look as nice this is much more clean You'll notice again, this is a single side kickstand, but it, it appears that they've got a mounting point at the center of the frame if you wanted to get the sturdy double leg kickstand that we've seen on some of the other bikes in the past. There's a 12 magnet sealed 
fairly high resolution cadence sensor there on the left. So it just detects movement as you pedal the bike. And that's what activates pedal assist. Right here, we have an expansion port for adding a USB dongle. And you can actually daisy chain two of those. So you'd have power from that main battery. And you'd be able to run some lights or maybe a boom box or other accessories back here. We actually have the same situation up front. So here's another little expansion port. We'd have two more USBs. You do have to pay extra for those. In the past, their displays had like a little plug built right in. But, you know, being able to have four total on this bike, tap into that 672 watt hour battery is pretty great. We're back on the drivetrain side of the bike. This is a 48 tooth steel chain ring with an aluminum alloy guide. So it's like a bash guard on both sides. And that's going to protect the teeth if you go over a tall obstacle or off road, it just protects the sensitive parts of the bike. Since these are 20 inch wheels, it does lower the, the whole frame a little bit, makes it easier to get pedal strikes and stuff. But again, with the 3.3 the inch tires, it, it raises it a little bit more. Than, uh, long story short, this is pretty well protected and it's also going to keep your pant and, and dress from touching the chain and getting snagged, which I appreciate. Another benefit of having the small wheels is just it's easier to load. If you have like a child seat back here or other cargo, just everything's a little bit closer to the ground. I love that they've got this neoprene slap guard here. It's just gonna keep the paint looking nice. Back here, we have a seven speed drivetrain, 11 to 34 tooth nickel plated DNP freewheel. That 34 tooth is great for getting started, for climbing, and then pretty quickly you jump up to those smaller rings that they're just more comfortable at high speed. You're not having to spin really fast. I love that they've got a derail your guard right here. This is steel, it's pretty sturdy, just in case the bike tips over, or if you're buying it direct, they ship it to you. It's in this big box, just keeps the sensitive bits from getting banged up. Shimano Altus, it's a lower end part, but it's also a short cage derailleur and it's doing a pretty good job. We got a barrel adjuster right here. I think that's just fine. By the way, this bike is fairly value priced at $24.99. They have cheaper versions of the bike. I think just the Rad Runner 2 and they have the older Rad Runner Plus as well. So a lot of choices with the company and, and how much you want to spend on the platform plus the accessories, it can start to add up. Here at the cockpit, we've got this thumb shifter, Shimano SIS index shifter, really big, easy to read with that optical gear window. I'm a fan of the little trigger shifters that go down here, but a lot of times those get crowded when you have a twist throttle like this. And so one of the advantages of having a big thumb shifter is that it's easy to press if you are wearing gloves or something. And since this bike does have those, those bigger tires, you can ride this and maybe in the snow or some of these other conditions where gloves would make sense. Some of the other highlights include these 90 millimeter wide plastic fenders. They're very bendy and flexible. They aren't quite as heavy as steel, maybe not quite as loud as aluminum. They're not like this rattly plastic. They're more like a rubberized kind of a feel. I really like those. And you'll notice that it connects right here at the bottom of the lower on the suspension to a metal threaded eyelet. So th this is really sturdy. I've seen some other fenders that kind of use a plastic cuff to hold on to the suspension. And it just over time could slide and dry out. These feel really tough. Here's the rear fender as well. You can see the wire going through it to that rear light. It's just set up very well and it comes down pretty low so you won't spray your friend if they're following close. The brakes are a big highlight with this platform. We've got Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, a nice big mineral oil reservoir here with motor inhibitors. So anytime you pull either brake lever, it cuts power to the motor immediately and it activates the rear light. So we follow these down. We've got a large 180 millimeter rotor up front, dual piston calipers, 180 millimeters in the rear. And you're getting a nice mechanical advantage over the smaller wheel size and just extra surface area for, for better cooling. And again, that's great if you're hauling some cargo and just because the bike is a little bit heavier. This is a class two electric bike, 20 mile per hour top speed. The motor is rated at 750 watts and they say 64 Newton meters. It's a planetary geared motor. Again, I love that it's black, it looks really nice. It does produce noticeable noise when you're at high power and high speed. So that's, that's kind of one of the trade-offs. You can lower the assist level or just use it more gently, but you're gonna hear that when we ride. Brad said this motor, it's been updated and it climbs 10% faster. Now let's talk about this battery pack here. I love that it has a, a 10 bar readout. So you have 10% increments. You know how full this is, whether it's on the bike or not. I love that they put the locking cylinder up high on the left hand side of the frame. So it's not down here where it's gonna get hit by the crank arm or you know wet and dirty. This is excellent. 
Oh, and by the way, that's the charging port on the left-hand side, so, you know, it's pretty easy to reach as well. Everything is right there. If we unlock it, look how easy this thing is. It just pops out, and we can take this off. One of the really cool design upgrades about this bike is if you get the locking center console, you can get this battery on and off without having to mess with the console. It just makes it a lot easier to deal with. This is a lithium ion battery. I think they use Samsung or LG, high quality stuff. They've got a year long warranty for it. You still wanna keep it in a cool dry location and keep it at least 50% charged if you aren't using it for a while. The extreme heat is gonna limit the number of full charge cycles it gets, so it kind of wears it out faster. And extreme cold is gonna stunt your range. So you might only get half the range you normally get because the cells are cold. So a lot of times, you know, maybe a garage or a laundry room or something, you can kind of fill this up. Let's go over and check out the charger here too while we're talking about it. This is a two amp charger. They upgraded it with better shielding in recent years, which is kind of nice. And then they have this wall mount. It'd be easy to reach and just kind of up and out of the way versus getting kicked and dirty on the floor. Two amps is decent, but for a 672 watt hour battery, it'd be nice if they had a little bit of a faster charger. So again, this is 48 volt, 14 amp hours. Uh, 672 watt hours, 7.7 .7 pounds. The bike comes with this little toolkit, everything you'd need to, to assemble it and maintain it over time, including like a, uh, a brake pad adjuster and some extra tools. Assembly is pretty easy, but there is some unpacking you're gonna have to do. Again, it's pretty heavy, so you have to break down the cardboard and hopefully recycle it and everything. You have to put the handlebar on, maybe adjust the displays a little bit, get that front wheel on, the front fender and light, and that's the most difficult part is kind of balancing these two things. But they're really, really good instructions. In fact, their documentation and their videos are just excellent. They have great customer support, some of the best. And they also have some physical headquarters and, and outlets that are popping up around the country. I think San Diego and Seattle, Washington, and some other parts of Europe and Canada, Vancouver. It hasn't come out yet, but they are gonna have a range extender option. So you can mount a battery, the same battery as we have on the down tube there, right here below the rear rack. You're gonna be able to see that charge level indicator and it's gonna lock. I think you're gonna end up with two different keys initially. And I just think, you know, the positioning of these batteries is really good. It's spreading that weight across the frame again and doubling your range. They say up to 100 miles. The official range estimate just for a single battery is 25 to 45 miles. So maybe it's more like 90 miles. Of course, that depends on your tire pressure and how much pedaling you're actually doing and the wind and the terrain and, you know, so, so many factors. Okay, so I'm remounting the battery. Just set it down here at the bottom. And I love that you can just push it in you don't even need to insert the keys or anything and it's locked into place as we make our way to the cockpit I just want to call out this saddle again they've really refined it so it's thicker and it's much more adjustable than before you can see we've got a single bolt clamp here but it allows you to tilt forward and slide the saddle forward and back in the past there was just like a metal platform it was flat and and that kept the saddle aligned and it looked really nice if you have the passenger package but it just didn't give you as much flexibility and now you can replace this seat post with this suspension post because it interfaces with those saddle rails and then you get that extra kind of a full suspension feel keep in mind if you go that route it's going to add a few inches here on that minimum saddle height so if you're a petite rider and you're thinking about the standover and you know getting up onto the saddle just keep that in mind overall i'm very happy with this the saddle's much more comfortable the passenger package is also upgraded so this rear rack is actually a bit longer passenger pad is thicker you still get skirt guards that protect your dress or your pants from touching the wheel and the tire and then there are pegs and the pegs are much lower on the frame you can see here you're gonna have just a little bit more room you're not gonna be quite as squished back here if you're riding on the back each one of those pegs is rated to 30 pounds so 60 pounds total and I love that they have these flat sides so that the pegs don't spin and unscrew over time and that passenger pad can be mounted and taken off very easily there's just like a, a big thumb screw kind of thing on the bottom it's just a single bolt that holds that on rad is also introducing a fat tire wheel lock that mounts right here and it works for the rad expand the rad rover 6 plus high step and step through and the rad runner 2 as well as the 3 plus here this is the first fat tire wheel lock i'm aware of most of the other wheel locks or cafe locks 
they they just aren't big enough to handle something like this. So it kind of surrounds the wheel and then there's a rod that goes through and that disables the bike from being rolled forward or backward. The rods sort of stop the spokes like that and it adds a layer of quick defense so you can dash into the cafe, but they also have a cable that's gonna interface with that cafe lock and that would wrap around a bike rack or a pole just to add another layer of defense. And if we come up to the cockpit, you can see these ergonomic stitched faux leather grips. They match the saddle really nicely. They aren't locking, so you can kind of twist them out of position, but they got some sticker stuff on the inside. So they're, they're pretty secure. I'm just being, you know, extra thorough here. A nice little flick bell. There are a lot of wires up here, and I just want to acknowledge that between the motor inhibitors, the hydraulic lines, the extra cables coming from the displays, multiple displays, and then down here to the neoprene wrap and everything. I think they've done a pretty good job of managing them, but it is a little extra. And if we look at the down tube here, we've got this plastic shield that's, I think, a, a nice compromise. It still makes it kind of hidden and protected for the cables, um, but they're going to be more accessible than if they actually went through the metal frame itself. Let's go over the displays. We've got a center display, 2.5 inch diagonal, and then a left display button pad that's 1.5 inches diagonal. So it's a little bit smaller. And to me, it seems a bit brighter. Interestingly, we can adjust the brightness of the center display if we wanna like preserve our night vision, for example, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't change uh, the left display. What we have on the left is a 10 bar battery infographic, just like we have on top of the battery. I love that. It's more precise, much better than five bars. Now, an actual percentage readout would be even better, but still, I'll take it. That's not too bad. We've got assist level one by default, but we could go down to zero or all the way up to five. These buttons are very clicky. They're easy to reach. It's great. This button, the gray button, that's actually for the lights. So if we just tap it, the lights will turn off, which is great if you're riding in a group. I really don't think you're gonna save too much battery capacity by turning them off. I would probably leave them on just for safety, but it's nice that they give you that option and make it, make it simple. We press it again, you can see that little bar lights up, so it's very clear what's going on. At the top, we've got time, like a clock, and then odometer, that's how many miles or kilometers you've ridden for the lifetime of the bike. If we wanna change those, we can hold up and down simultaneously, and then it'll change to trip time and trip odometer. If we wanna clear those, we would just hold the lights button for a few seconds. In the center, we have speed, it's in miles per hour right now. At the bottom, we have watts, so like how hard that motor is working. We can activate walk assist by holding the down arrow, and I really love the animation it does when we do this. You can see there's almost like two feet here, walking along and then we've got a little icon on the main display as well. This is really handy if you've got the rack loaded up, uh, maybe you've got a child's seat. Remember this bike is 75 and a half pounds and if you're in a really crowded area or it's just technical terrain, sometimes that walk mode can be a real lifesaver. To get into the settings menu, we're gonna hold down and light. And there we go. So we can change to a 12 or 24 hour clock. I'm just gonna press light again. We can set the clock. We can change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. And then we can change the brightness like I was talking about. So it's all the way bright right now, uh, but we can take it down a little ways and, and it might not be quite as distracting. We'll press lights again. It just starts to repeat the menu. I'm gonna hold down and light to exit. And there we go. We can really see that headlight now that it's starting to get dark. Again, 100 lumens and we've got that ring, sort of a almost like a running light be seen. And then in the center, it's got that top cut off, it aims down. And of course we can adjust the housing. It's a pretty cool light. Um, part of me wishes it was a little bit more visible from the side, like had a stripe or a bigger cutout, but I can't complain. It does it does shine from this 90 degree uh, angle. And it's, it's just easy to see that. And the rear as well, you can see it from multiple different angles. I, I like the positioning here. It's low enough that you can get that secondary battery into the rack. If someone's sitting up there, it's it's far back enough that's not going to get kicked, but it's not so far back that it's like the farthest point on the bike where you're at a rack or you're parking inside, it's always going to be smashing into things. It's only one LED, but a, again, you could potentially add other lights. Or maybe you could get a helmet with a, a light on it or put one on a backpack. Okay, I'm going to start my ride test here. I like to do this in the highest level of assist so you can really hear that motor. I'm just going to start pedaling here and it'll take off. course I can shift gears and get that perfect pedal cadence so it's nice and comfortable. Now 
that's the highest gear, so I'm not having to beat eggs. One of the things I love about this setup is that even in zero assist, you can still use that throttle and it's just a really nice way to get going if you're in soft terrain or give your legs a break. You don't have to worry about accidentally activating pedal assist by moving your feet. It's just like a little moped or something, kind of a scooter feel. So this is my buddy Jim and Barb over here. I thought, give it a try and give us your feedback. You up for that, Jim? Sure. Hey, this is a throttle. You know how to use that? Uh, I haven't used a throttle yet on one of these. First try. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I left it in high gear for you. <laughs> Sorry about that. There he goes. I think he's using those higher assist levels now. Wow. Weird having a throttle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you think? I want to hear your opinions. Um, I bought a dirt bike last summer. Yeah. A 230. Nice. Uh, for exploring out in the desert. Yeah. This a Honda? Be, What'd you get? It, it's a Kawasaki. Kawasaki. Okay. I think this would work just as good. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> zippy, right? With that, that hub motor there. Yeah, it's very versatile. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a, my friend will call it an SUV. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they call it kind of like a utility bike. It's yeah. like a mini cargo right. bike, kind of. Yeah. How did you feel about the fit? Because you're on the taller side for this bike. Did it feel kind of comfortable or squished? Well, I didn't even notice the it size does. being an issue. Nice. It seemed fine to me. How tall are you? I'm about 5'9". Okay, I'm a couple inches taller. But yeah, a couple it, it, inches on it me. It feels right for me. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you <laughs> yeah, for doing that and that being willing fun. to get some shots out of this. You know, I appreciate it. Rad Power Bikes has a really complete line of accessories, whether it's, you know, a bottle mount for the front or additional lights, as well as a front platform rack. And I, I love the way they've designed it. So it actually mounts to the steer tube on the bike and that's gonna keep it extra sturdy. It's not gonna tip as you steer the bike or as you park. One caveat is that you're gonna to have to relocate that headlight and kind of mount it to the front of the rack and then it's not gonna point where you steer. But it's still, it's really well done and it allows you to have up to 30 pounds on the rack or 22 pounds if you get the front basket. Because the rack is longer on the Rad Runner 3 Plus, it's compatible with the Ballard bag as well as the smaller Fremont bag. These are panniers. There's trunk bags, there's even insulated bags. And they just introduced a hard shell locking box and panniers like you might find on a motorcycle or something. These are really cool. They're hard plastic. They feel tough. They've got a water seal rubber gasket at the top. Each one can hold 15 pounds. So if you had one on the right and the left, that'd be 30. And then 15 more pounds in the top box, that's 45 pounds. That's quite a lot. They're really impressive and they mount to the bike in such a way that they kind of screw on from inside the box and you have to unlock the box to get to the screws. And so people can't really tamper with it. I'm just really excited for people who live in the city, people who might replace their car with an electric bike like this because it just feels so much more secure than all the panniers and bags I see from other companies. Looking at these things and messing around with them, they're, they're really outstanding. And of course, they're also introducing a new Rad Trailer. It's compatible with all of the Rad Power Bikes except for the Rad City 5 and the Rad Wagon 3. I think you need to remove the running boards on the Rad Wagon 3 to use it. But we have a Rad Rover 6 Plus step through right here. And we've also got the Rad Runner 3 Plus and it works with both of them. And in short, we're really just gonna remove this nut and replace it with this one. And when you're not using the trailer, you can quick release and just, you know, take it off and you can leave that little interface on the bikes. I've got to say, I love that they've got this kind of rubberized protective cover where the axle would be, because if you go past a door or a wall, this metal could scratch stuff, right? So they've been very, very thoughtful, a lot of attention to detail. Look at all the reflectors. There's two reflectors back here. This thing is gonna ride low enough that 
your bike lights aren't gonna get blocked. They've even got this little flag. This trailer is rated at 100 pounds, as you see here, but if you add the cargo insert, then it's 90 pounds. You, you know, they've got all kinds of bungee straps and a cargo net, a lot of great options. And there's also a pet insert, and then it goes down to 84 pounds. Check it out, I just love this. You can see it folds flat, this pet carrier's it's pretty awesome. There's a lot to it. I actually had this backwards when it was set into the rad trailer. This orange part goes in the rear. It keeps you more visible. And then this is just mesh, whereas the front, it has mesh as well as plastic. And that's probably gonna keep your pet dry if you're riding through the rain or maybe your fender isn't giving complete coverage. It's got mesh on the sides. There's a little pocket here, maybe for some doggy bags or a leash. And we've got these secure loops here so you can roll up this 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 roof opens it's got like a skylight so this could either be screen or covered completely if you wanted pretty comfy in here there's actually a lot of space <laughs> looks like this pad is removable so you could wash it uh, the folks at rad power bikes were saying you could even use this as a crate for crate training or just like the puppy house or big cat house. Maybe you have a raccoon or something. Lots of possibilities. And I'm just gonna see how this feels. I definitely notice a little bit more weight back there. I hear a little bit of rattling with the straps and stuff. When I was younger, we used to have a burly trailer and I would take my sister around and it was so much fun just riding with her and through the neighborhoods and tried not to give her too much of a thrill, but I might have dumped it once. So you want to be careful cornering on this thing and just keep an eye on it. There we go. Yeah, you know, you could stop like this and look back at your pet and check that everything was good. You could hear them if they're yelping, something's wrong. It's pretty cool. Well guys, I think that's about it. I've had a lot of fun riding this bike over the past couple of days and trying it out in the dark and off-road and everything. For the full written review, check out electricbikereview.com. I've covered most of the other Rad products there and there's a cool comparison tool. You can look at those back to back. This is a free review just using a demo bike. My goal is to be objective and help you guys. I've just been so detailed on the write-up because I've covered several generations of the Rad Runner and there are a lot of little you know things to look at and, and consider if you're gonna get this bike it does cost a little bit more but i think they've just they've made a, a really outstanding product here that's capable of so much i've got some forums you can see what accessories people are using and how they like them and their comments and stuff so as usual ride safe i love you guys we'll see you next time